November 18th, 2023. SpaceX tested the integrated Starship spacecraft and Super Heavy booster for the second time. The vehicle lifted off successfully with all 33 Raptor engines working perfectly. One of the main goals for this mission was a stage separation, which did indeed occur after the booster engine cutoff. Although the flight duration was planned to be 90 minutes, but it lasted around 8 minutes. After around 3 minutes, the booster experienced a rapid unscheduled disassembly. The spacecraft still continued to fly toward the space. After about 8 minutes, the signal from the spacecraft was lost, and the ship also went through the RUD. SpaceX got the launch license from the FAA on November 14th, and the next flight was originally set for three days later that date. But it was announced that the company needs to replace a failed grid fin actuator on B9. So the second flight attempt was appointed on November 18th. The space agency revealed their plan about launching the vehicle during a 20-minute window. During the months of preparation, multiple changes were made both to the launch pad and to the vehicle. The main difference on the launch site between first and second test flights was the addition of a water deluge system to expand fire suspension system of the Super Heavy booster. The key aspect of this second flight was the hot staging. This system enables the Starship's second stage engines to ignite while it's still attached to the first stage and push itself away from the booster. As a result of this stage separation, the booster would land in the ocean while the spacecraft would go a bit further into the space before eventually re-entering the Earth's orbit. SpaceX was planning to impact the spacecraft into the Pacific Ocean. After the team pressurized the second stage, the launch director gave a go for launch at T-40 seconds after checking the vehicle for one more time. After loading both stages with liquid oxygen and liquid methane, the Starship Integrated Test Vehicle was finally ready to be launched from Starbase, Texas. With only two seconds of delay, the spacecraft finally lifted off with twice the thrust of legendary Saturn V rocket, thanks to all 33 Raptor engines. The vehicle survived the maximum aerodynamic pressure after a minute into the flight. While both power and telemetry were nominal during first minutes, the next milestone would be the hot staging. About three minutes after the liftoff, it was time for hot staging separation that everyone was waiting for. Since some people were assuming that Starship might not even go so far from the launch pad, the successful stage separation was a bit of surprise. Right before the separation, the heavy booster shut down 30 of the 33 engines as planned. After just a few seconds, the hot staging took place successfully with the second stage engine's ignition. It was also reported that ship avionics power telemetry was nominal after the separation. The historical fact is, it was the first time a reusable rocket was using a hot stage. Although the booster managed to do a maneuver after the hot staging, one of the 10 engines that was supposed to be reignited for boost back burn failed to do so, and the super heavy booster could survive only for a few seconds before experiencing the RUD. However, the second stage managed to accelerate further with its six engines. Another big goal of the mission was to do a re-entry test and see if the spacecraft can survive but the second stage shut down all its engines a few couple seconds earlier than planned. As the cameras lost track of the stage, the company was still waiting for a signal acquisition. Later it was revealed that weather radars picked up a cloud of debris forming near the point where the spacecraft was supposed to be. At T plus 1140, SpaceX finally announced that they have lost contact with Starship. It was assumed that the autonomous flight termination system might be triggered and the second stage went through the RUD, just like the first stage. Later that day, the FAA said in a statement that launch didn't cause any injuries or public property damages. So, was this a success or failure for SpaceX? There were multiple objectives for this test flight. Let's see how many of them were successful. The liftoff. We can say that it was very successful. Igniting all 33 Raptor engines. Unlike the first launch, this time all engines were working properly until hot staging. Hot stage separation. Since it was the main goal of this mission, SpaceX conducted the stage separation very professionally, even though it was not being anticipated by the company critics. Reaching the orbit. The second stage definitely passed the Kármán line and went to space, so we can say SpaceX succeeded in it as well. Booster landing. It was one of the key aspects of the flight and unfortunately it didn't go well, since the booster experienced the RUD right after the separation. Surviving the re-entry. Another thing everyone was looking forward to was the Starship surviving the re-entry test and splashing down into the ocean. 
However, the spacecraft was assumed to go through the rud after about T plus 12 minutes. So although neither of the stages survived the tests, the hot staging, which was probably the most crucial milestone, did happen. Also considering the fact that it was not only a test flight, but it was a test vehicle that was launched as part of a test project, so it should be counted as a grand success for a SpaceX, especially for improving so much since the first flight. Now what's next? As it was seen from the highway, there were about three ships that seemed to be ready to fly. Right now, SpaceX needs to investigate this second flight and learn why both the Super Heavy Booster and the Starship second stage had to terminate flights mid-air. After getting a new FAA launch license, we might see a new Starship launch even before the year ends.